Good morning, everyone. My name is Dan Meyer, and I am the president and founder of Sonic Virtual Assistant. And um, Sonic VA is a VA agency um, in the Philippines. We currently employ uh, almost 30 uh, virtual workers um, in a variety of jobs, uh, things like graphic design, video editing, social media management, um, and also uh, executive assistants. And I've gotten several requirements recently. Um, where people are looking for an executive assistant, an executive virtual assistant um, that can work you know, 100% online. Um, the requirements are coming from American small business owners who uh, feel like they need somebody to help pick up some of the slack, like a right-hand person that can help them really run their business. And so we're looking uh, to find a few people to help with those kind of clients. Um, this is a bit of a training program, meaning that you're going to be uh, assigned to clients, but you're going to get some occasional training as well. It's not a situation where you're going to get all the training up front. Like you're not going to get you know a week or two of training. We're not like a call center where you're going to get all that kind of formal training. It's more like you'll get trained on the skills that you need as you need them. And a lot of the training will actually be just you're given resources. And so you actually have to self-train. And that's pretty common for those of you that may not have worked as virtual assistants before. Um, it's generally a, a lot different than other types of outsourcing. Um, it's less structured. Um, it's more on you to learn things. It's more uh, self-knowledge, uh, self-education. Um, and it requires a special kind of person to be really good um, at not just being a virtual assistant, but being an executive assistant. So we'll talk about that uh, this morning. So um, what we're going to do is, is really... Uh, focus on um, how Filipino virtual assistants, like most of your most of you are either currently virtual assistants or your plan is to become a virtual assistant, um, how you can work primarily for first time American executive or first time entrepreneurs, first time American entrepreneurs. Um, this is a special focus that I have is that I'm working with a lot of people that are experts in their field. They've worked in a corporate job for a number of years, usually 10 plus. And they're deciding to leave that corporate environment behind and set up their own business. Some are, some of them are launching it as a sideline. Some of them have quit and are, are fully immersed in setting up their, their business, usually based on their expertise. Say, for example, someone's been a project manager for 15 years, or they've been a business analyst, or they've been a uh, risk manager or a compliance expert or a quality insurance expert. And they've built up that area of expertise that they want to then uh, make a consulting business out of where they can go work for uh, clients um, and be paid as a consultant and no longer be a full-time employee of one company. This is common for people that hit that certain uh, threshold of, of experience. Um, I myself follow that path. Um, I'll talk about my story in a bit. Um, but these clients that I bring on board, they're new to being an entrepreneur. And a lot of times they get in too deep too quickly. They're trying to do too many things. They're trying to do it all themselves. And they get stuck. They get stuck in what we call busyville. They're so busy, but they're not getting anything done. And they need help. So in those cases, I recommend more often than not, that they hire a virtual assistant and not just any virtual assistant, but a virtual assistant who can really kind of focus full time on that business so that when the, the entrepreneur is doing things that they have to do, um, they can free themselves up by doing the things they don't have to be the one to do. Right. So they they make a list of all the things that you have to do in your business and in their business. And then you can take circle the ones that can be done by a virtual assistant. And they start outsourcing those, uh, editing YouTube videos, scheduling appointments, doing lead generation on LinkedIn, um, publishing stuff on a Medium blog or a YouTube channel, um, managing their social media, making sure there's content posted every day and doing engagement on that content. Um, these kind of things can be delegated. And so I talk to a lot of these first time entrepreneurs as a, a way to be successful is really to uh, take that work um, and basically delegate it to a virtual assistant. And so that's really what we're going to focus on uh, with the Sony VA program, right? So um, we're looking at new virtual assistants or um, people that have worked as a certain type of virtual assistant, but want to be that e EVA, that executive virtual assistant, and match you with first-time American entrepreneurs. I focus on American entrepreneurs because I'm American and because most of my connections are in the United States. 
Um, I'm actually in the U.S. right now. Um, I go back and forth between the Philippines and the U.S. And I'm here in the U.S. right now meeting with clients and trying to onboard uh, new people that will need virtual assistants. So the goals uh, for the trainees of this program, if you're going to become one of our EVAs, and again, it's not a totally training program, and it's not a job right away. It's a combination of both. And I'll walk through um, kind of how it works as we go up uh, throughout this. But basically, we're looking for people that can become indispensable assets to these budding entrepreneurs, ensuring a symbiotic, productive, and mutually prosperous relationship. For a, a, a newbie entrepreneur to be successful, they're going to have to get help. And they're going to have to have somebody that can work together like this, that can be symbiotic, that can be in sync. And they're going to have to help that entrepreneur, the V is going to have to help the entrepreneur be both productive and prosperous. One of the biggest challenges small business owners have is when they launch their business, they're short on cash. Um, and so they need to make sure they do things fairly uh, on the cheap um, and be really conscious of how much money they're spending. Sometimes that requires them to hire somebody and they're looking for a, a good value. So for a virtual assistant who's working for a new entrepreneur, you have to go into that expecting that their success ties to your success. You're only going to get paid if they're making money. Um, very few entrepreneurs can afford to lose money and still keep paying a virtual assistant. So there's a, a, a connection there that we'll talk about as well. So, you know, if you look behind just about every successful entrepreneur, um, there's an executive assistant who turns their chaos into order, who turn their dreams into plans and turn their visions into reality. And that's my case, right? So well, let me share with you a little bit about my background. My background is I worked for a bank, Wells Fargo Bank. It's one of the biggest banks in the United States. They actually have a couple of uh, call center facilities in the Philippines. And I worked for Wells Fargo primarily as a business analyst for almost uh, 12 and a half years. And in that time, um, I became an expert. I knew all about how to run reports, how to generate you know, uh, information for decision makers, how to do business dashboards, how to do competitive intelligence gathering, how to data, data storytelling, how to make uh, predictive models. I'm an expert on Excel. Um, and so that expertise, I got to the point where I was really, really one of the top analysts at the, at the company I worked for. And I kind of hit a ceiling. Like I, I couldn't go up into senior management because I didn't have the right credentials, or the right background, but I was really, really good at being an analyst. And I decided that I wanted to be my own boss, that I wanted to leave Wells Fargo and set up my own business, which I did. So I was basically an expert who decided to become an entrepreneur. I went from being an employee to being a contractor or a consultant or somebody that people would hire to help them in their business. And this is something that when I did that, you know, I, I thought, OK, I'm going to be great at this. Um, this is going to be fun. I'm going to be able to do what I want to do, when I want to do, for who I want to do. And I no longer have a boss. And although that was a cool freedom, it also was quite scary because I all of a sudden had to do everything. I had to do my own social media. I had to do my own uh, travel arrangements. I had to do my own planning uh, for meetings. I had to do my own setting up my own Zoom calls. I had to book my own appointments. Everything I had to do took up time. And a lot of things that I was doing were not generating revenue right away. And as a new business owner, I definitely had to make money. So my first business actually failed. My first year as an entrepreneur was a complete and epic disaster. But I learned a lot. I, I lost a lot of money. I made, invested in bad partners. I didn't do the right things, but I learned from that year. So in year two, my first business failed. But my second business, to ensure that it actually worked, the first thing I did was to hire a virtual assistant from the Philippines, an executive virtual assistant. And um, uh, she worked with me for the first year, helped me stay organized, helped me book meetings, uh, manage some of our social media, did a bunch of uh, preparation stuff for my business. My business really is to train business analysts. And so I launched on this path where um, I would, over the next 10 years, train over 10,000 Filipino call center employees, mostly people working in operations or HR, uh, people that um, work with a lot of data, I trained them um, in business analytics. I did like training programs within companies like Accenture and Genpack. Um, I did public trainings. I taught in schools. I actually taught uh, a semester course at uh, De La Salle. Um, so I've done a lot of things based on that expertise that I got from my, my corporate job. 
And to be successful in my expertise, I hired a virtual assistant uh, in the Philippines um, to help me do that. So when I talk to clients about, hey, you want to launch a business or you launch a new business and you're struggling, you should hire a virtual assistant. I speak from experience. I'm basically able to tell them this is how I did it and how I can help you do it. And that's what we focus on with Sonic VA. Um, not all of our clients are like that. Uh, some of our clients are, have very different backgrounds. But for the most part, my job um, is to figure out what a client needs, get those requirements, and then find the appropriate virtual assistant. I've got a team of virtual assistants. A couple of them are here on this call. We have a couple uh, trainees that are on this call as well. Um, and basically, um, we facilitate you know, the growth of our virtual assistants to be able to match these requirements. We also hire people that are freelancers. So occasionally we'll hire a veteran virtual assistant to handle a certain type of client. And then we also um, look to work with fresh grads or even working students um, to be able to uh, work with our assistants as well, uh, or work, work with our clients as well. So this is what I do. This is what I've been doing for a long time. This is what I love to do. Um, and now it's a chance for us to potentially work together um, if you're interested in being an executive virtual assistant working for Sonic VA. Um, we're going we're gonna to cover four topics today. Um, number one is cultural communication dynamics. The most important skill that any virtual assistant, no matter what they do, has is their communication skills. You can be the best video editor, the best bookkeeper. You can be the most amazing graphic designer. You can be the most uh, successful lead generation expert as a virtual assistant. But if you can't communicate well with your clients, you're going to have trouble. And communication comes in several ways. It's not always having to speak great English. It also means you have to be able to ask a lot of questions and you have to be able to have empathy and you have to be able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and you have to think strategically. You have to be flexible. You have to be open-minded. There's a lot of things that go into this cultural communication dynamics that a lot of people as Filipino virtual assistants probably undervalue and definitely things that clients don't know they need to look for. So more so than tools and tech mastery, I think the most important skill a VA has is their communication skills. And once you've got good communication skills, then you can add the tools, the apps, the tech um, to be even better at something. Like, so if you like making videos, the technology you use, maybe use CapCut or use Filmora or use Adobe, but you can get better at that through training. The communication skills is really the hardest one. It's a soft skill. You kind of either have it or you don't. So by the time you're looking to be a virtual assistant, you've either been used to working with foreigners, comfortable speaking English, um, have an ability to have a conversation with somebody, ask a lot of questions, you either have that or you don't. It's hard to learn that after you're out of you know, high school and college. So that's why I put such a preference um, on communication dynamics. That's number one. Number two is tools and tech mastery. You got to have the skills, right? So if you're going to work as a graphic designer, you have to know Canva and not just know Canva, but you have to know how to, to do things, right? And you have to be able to use the templates and understand things like color and style and mood. You got to have some artistic skill set. If you're a bookkeeper, or, you know, you got to know how to balance books. You got to be good with numbers um, and whatever slice of business that you can do as a virtual assistant, you want to have those tech skills. You want to know apps like every VA should know a couple different project management tools like Trello and Monday. Every VA should know different types of, of graphics and editing tools. Every VA should be well-versed in, in the, the do's and don'ts of using various social media platforms, especially if you want to be an executive virtual assistant. If you're going to be an executive virtual assistant, you kind of have to be a jack of all trades and you have to master them all. You, you can't just uh, be good at one or two things and you can't be mediocre at everything. Um, it's not for everybody. If you've never been a VA before, it's probably a, a big jump to become an executive virtual assistant. Um, but if you have the communication skills and you're willing to learn the tech skills, it's definitely possible. Um, most people start out as a VA doing social media management or they have a certain skill, like a graphic design skill or a video editing skill that they lean into. But you're going to have to tap into all these things. So as an executive virtual assistant, you got to be able to do a little of everything. And the uh, secret is that you don't have to do them all yourself. There are some things that you can know somebody else to do, right? For example, you can be good at everything but video editing and graphic design. 
Well, in some cases, then you can hire a video editor or graphic designer on a project basis to do what the client needs. The client can hire them or you can hire them and they can work under you. There's different ways to do it. If you're part of Sonic VA, we have a video editing and graphic design team that can do some of that for you. You wouldn't have to do all the work yourself. So that's kind of the first two pieces, right? Communication and uh, tech. The, the next two that we'll focus on tonight, or this morning, sorry, it's tonight here in, in the U.S., um, our understanding entrepreneurial needs and social media mastery. Again, a soft skill before a tech skill. So understanding entrepreneurial needs is really important because when you work for an entrepreneur, especially a first-time entrepreneur, it can be quite challenging. Now, the numbers are not in your favor. Four out of five small businesses will fail. So four to every five clients that you work with at some point, will probably fail. No matter what you do, it's just the numbers, right? You can't change that. What you want to do is, one, look for the clients that are going to succeed, and two, be willing to do all you can to help them succeed. But once they, they decide to quit or they, they fail, then you're ready to move on to the next one. This means you're going to have a lot of turnover. Uh, the average Filipino virtual assistant has multiple clients. The average Filipino virtual assistant um, spends most of their time looking for new clients. Um, it's hard to become a full-time employed virtual assistant. But one of the best ways to find that full-time gig and to work for one client for a long period of time is to be their executive assistant. So um, if you can understand these entrepreneurial needs, what does an entrepreneur entrepreneur need from their VA to be successful? That will set you up for success. And then you can do things like master social media. Now, we'll talk about mastering social media because a lot of people misunderstand what it is. A lot of clients misunderstand that and a lot of VAs misunderstand it. So we'll talk about how we at Sonic VA, we have the Sonic VA way when it comes to how we talk to our clients and how we train our VAs on how to do social media. So these are the four topics we'll talk about today, right? So we're going to go through each one of them. Um, I'm going to spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes uh, at most on each one. At the end, um, you probably have more questions. I've got videos that you can watch. I will do more webinars um, about each of these topics. But we're going to kind of have this high-level talk, and then that will lead us towards what happens next. How do you become uh, a Sonic VA um, and how do you focus on being an executive virtual assistant? So let's move on and talk about the first one, cultural communication. Um, our goal is to equip our EVAs with the skills to navigate the nuances between Filipino and American cultures. Now, it's interesting. We have a very unique relationship, the Philippines and the United States. Um, without going too much into history and not wanting to get into the politics of it, um, there's been a commonality between our two countries for a hundred years. Um, good, bad, whatever. The bottom line is it's unique. Um, the Philippines is the only country in Asia that speaks in American style English, where it's taught in the school system. Um, Filipinos, on the average, uh, have better grammar and spell better and write better in English than even most Americans do. Um, so there's a, a deep uh, pool of talent um, most of the biggest movies in the Philippines are American movies. You see American culture all over the place. Um, you know, when I'm in the Philippines, I can go eat at any number of American restaurants. Um, although I do love Filipino restaurants, like for example, I prefer Mangan Asal over KFC, but that's just me. Um, but bottom line is, you know, there's a deep culture connection. Um, but there's some differences and it's important to recognize these. And really successful virtual assistants, especially EVAs that work for American clients, they learn how to work with these differences. For example, Americans value time way more than Filipinos do. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a different thing, right? Americans, for the most part, are always on time, if not early. The whole idea of Filipino time, of showing up a little bit late, um, is foreign to Americans. Americans are also probably a little more money driven and a little less uh, family driven than most Filipinos. Um, most Americans will go to work sick. Um, they won't take time off if they have a sick parent. Um, the, and most Filipinos probably would be more likely to do that. Again, it's not 100 percent, not saying good or bad. There's just a difference. Right. So a lot of Americans, when they first work with the Filipino virtual assistant, they'll be surprised when they hear someone say, oh, I can't come to work today because I have to take my mom to the hospital. Um, or I can't come to work today because, you know, I need to take my sister to school 
these kind of things really most Americans would consider to be um, not the best work ethic. But in the Filipino culture, they're important. So we'll talk a lot about these differences as we go through these trainings and as we do things to kind of uplift our, our EVAs. I know um, Nick can speak to all the differences about trying to keep up with me, right? So uh, I, I speak fast. I speak mostly English. I do speak a little Tagalog here and there, but mostly English. Um, and I'm always just doing something different, jumping around from thing to thing. And so it um, it requires the skill set to be able to navigate that cultural difference. These nuances are important. So one of the ways that you can be successful with this cultural dynamic, this cultural communication dynamic, is be engaging. Emphasize the importance of clear communication, understanding different work styles and expectations. Have clear expectations. And sometimes it's up to the VA to set these, especially if you're working with a new virtual or new and entrepreneur. Um, they may not know what's best. They may be looking for you to recommend what social media platform to use. They may be looking to, to you to decide, should they focus on doing reels and IG or should they focus on doing uh, YouTube videos? They should look at look to you to say, what product management tool should we use? So understanding and communicating these expectations are clear. What time of the day do they want you to work? Does Is it realistic? Um, how much are they going to pay you? Make sure that's up front. Uh, how are they going to pay you? Is it going to come through PayPal? Are they going to pay you through another app? Um, are they going to pay you once a month, twice a month, um, at the end of a project? You want to have all this stuff clear because, again, they're not going to talk about stuff they don't think about and they don't know. And they may be looking for a veteran vir virtual assistant to be able to help them. So if you're working with Sonic VA, we can take care of this stuff for you, right? We have a process, an onboarding process. I cover with the clients, you know, when they're going to get paid and how much they're going to get paid and um, their VAs are going to get paid, and how they how they communicate. We talk about how to make sure we have a clear idea of when um, the VA should be available. Uh, you're not going to be 24-7, right? So you got to set expectations. The clients, they can reach out to you Monday through Friday between 8 p.m. and midnight Philippines time. And that's, your, that's when you're working for them. Other than that, you're working for somebody else or at your own time. They have to respect that. They need to know how to get a hold of you. Should you use WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or whatever tool you want to use? So we said all these things that help you be engaging. Because to be engaging means you have to constantly be in front of them. And this is a challenge for a lot of Filipino uh, virtual assistants. Um, Philippines, in general, and again, I, I say this, you know, in all frankness, I'm not, you know, I love the Philippines. I spend most of my time there. Um, but I do feel sometimes that Filipinos can be a bit timid, maybe a bit shy right? Get nosebleed in a sense when having to work with, with foreigners. Um, and this can be a big problem because uh, a lot of times you'll wait for something. You're waiting for them to give you direction. You're waiting for them to give you feedback and nothing's getting done. And they are thinking, well, if you have a question, you'll ask. If you want feedback, you'll ask me for it. So the disconnect, because the VA is being a little passive and the American is being a little bit too hands off. So you want to meet in the middle. That's how you be engaged. And this leads you to be to be in what we call stay in sync. Um, address common misunderstandings, time zone differences, best practice for establishing rapport and trust up front, right? So you want to be likable and trustworthy. You're going to go far as an executive assistant if your client likes you and trusts you. If they don't necessarily know you well enough to like you, and if they can't trust you because there's not clear communication, not transparency in what you're doing, there'll be problems. So one way around this is to provide a weekly report, a weekly summary, or even sometimes daily, sometimes monthly. I tell clients, you know, start out with some daily communication. And then after the first week or so, once or twice a week, and then by the end of the first month, you know, at least once a week have communication. Um, over time, things will get more and more automated in the sense the client has less involvement and more um, of their time can be spent working. Uh, the client, the VA can be working independently more often. And this is something that um, I think will help. So when you think about staying in sync and being engaging, these are a couple things that really are important when you're trying to do that cultural communication. So the other thing I'll talk about um, a lot with my VAs is that they have to have good emotional intelligence. You have to be able to foster effective communication with a new entrepreneur or client. 
by initiating things. Then again, they should come standard. When I bring on a client, I tell them we're going to do an onboarding. I'm part of that onboarding process. We talk about the needs and preferences of setting clear expectations and roles and deliverables and, and using collaboration tools for real-time updates, using Slack, using Facebook Messenger, using WhatsApp, using uh, different tools like Trello and Monday and Asana. Um, these are things we talk about. But if you're not working with an agency like mine and you're doing it on your own, if you're a freelancer, um, you want to make sure you're offering these kind of things. And even if you're one of my VAs, sometimes we have to remind the clients about this stuff. Again, it goes separate or maybe backwards from what most Filipino VAs expect. Most think this is going to come to them. The client's going to bring the meeting times. The client's going to bring their preferences. The client's going to ask for the communication stuff. But a lot of times they don't know they're supposed to because they're new at being entrepreneurs. So that's why the VAs that are successful as EVAs are more proactive. You want to do regular check-ins. I mentioned like, you know, daily to start, weekly, you know, a couple times a week after that, eventually get it to a point where it's a regular thing where it's um, a lot of autonomy for the VA. Um, maintain documentation. Most clients, new clients, they can be quite chaotic. They don't have their processes mapped out yet. They don't have a workflow. They don't have uh, SOPs. They don't have anything that you may be used to if you're transitioning from a corporate job or from school into being a virtual assistant. Um, you have to, again, help create these things. A lot of times I'll put a new EVA with a, a new client. It'll be really to help the EVA will be charged with documenting stuff. You know, document your process flow, document how your client acquisition works, document how you want social media done. So there's a clear understanding. And this helps eliminate some of those problems where you can get out of sync. You want to embrace this culture and emotional intelligence further, so it further enriches the relationship, right? You want to create um, an environment where you're catering to the entrepreneur's unique requirements. And you want to do it quickly and you want to do it efficiently, adeptly, right? Um, what this means is that, again, you have to be the one to kind of take the lead, take the first step sometimes, be the one to offer suggestions. This is not for everyone, right? The, but those that are successful at this, this is what makes them successful. They're able to really see um, opportunity working with American business owners. Um, because when you're working with American business owners, um, even though I said a lot of them are going to fail, um, they don't fail quickly. Um, they they have access to credit. They pay in dollars. There's a lot of opportunities. Um, the American economy is stronger than most other countries' economies right now. It's actually still, you know, going strong. Um, we're, we have a lot of open jobs. Um, there's a lot of reasons why it's a very good time to be a Filipino virtual assistant working with an American business owner. But really, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for VAs that have emotional intelligence, the ability to kind of get inside the mind of the client. Um, and to think how they can help the client, how they can be proactive, supportive, empathetic, and so forth. If this sounds like you, we're good. Um, if this doesn't sound like you, um, there's other opportunities out there. You know, if, if you're still feeling like this is a little bit too advanced for you, we hire new VAs for other things. There's also opportunities where you can, you know, grow into the job, right? Maybe you start as a general VA, but eventually you become an EVA. There's opportunities uh, throughout the spectrum. But again, we're focusing today on this uh, EVA, Executive Virtual Assistant.